Hi there. Morning. Welcome. Thanks so for having you me. So glad you could come. Come on in. So we are going to be milking today my cow named Daisy. She's about two years old and she has a calf named Basil. She's about six months. All right, so now I'm going to open this door and let Daisy out into this stall here so that we can milk her. Got milk? No, get out of there. Ow, 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 no, ow. That's Daisy's corn. So to wash Daisy's teeth, I have a bucket of warm water here. And I am just gonna wash her teeth because I don't want any of the bad bacteria where she laid down to get in with the milk. And then I am gonna take a dry rag and I am gonna dry her teeth off. So I'm gonna show you how to milk a cow. So I grab a teat and I start at the top and I press with these two fingers and then I go down. Grab it by the top. Right. No, grab this one. Like that one? Right. Is that a very good one or something? Yeah, this one doesn't work so great. Right, so you're gonna start it up. <laughs> oh, yeah, so grab it the top no, and you don't, can- Don't squeeze down. Okay. You're not supposed squeeze to squeeze down. it. You're supposed to grab it off the top and- Okay, so I have to have like more fists around it and then like squeeze, yes. okay. <laughs> <laughs> It takes right. a little while to get right. good aim. Uh, oh. oh. <laughs> I can feel like you can feel like yeah, when it fills can, with milk. Okay. And so, then like, no, no, you're doing like, it wrong. You're squeezing. So you gotta I'm just, squeezing. You gotta you gotta so, roll it out. So I, start up here yeah. at the top okay. and roll your fingers down. Okay. <laughs> yeah. My get, get this. No, right. no, use all your fingers. All right. I know, but my fingers are so large so they're <laughs> as well. <laughs> Okay, so I, I tried to tie it and then like, there we go, right? Yeah. Oh. Ah. Wow, there's a little more technique to this than one would think at first, isn't there? Yeah, you just do it, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna try two at once now since I'm getting so good at this. Oh no. Okay. Okay. <sighs> How's it going? Not great. Ah. Okay, let's try the one back here. It's a little bigger. Oh yeah, look at that. You know, milk is very nutritious and that's because it contains a lot of protein and different sorts of vitamins. It also has a lot of sugar, even though it doesn't taste sweet. And that's because it's not like normal table sugar, it's a sugar called lactose. And lactose is what's called a disaccharide. What that means is that it's composed of uh, two smaller sugar molecules that are joined together. And those two smaller compounds are called glucose and galactose. They're joined by this special sort of bond which is very hard to break. So when you drink milk, that, that particular bond between those two sugars is really hard to rip apart. And to do that, you have a special enzyme, which is a type of protein which has a particular job making some chemical reaction occur. And this particular enzyme has the job of ripping apart that lactose molecule into those smaller sugars so that you can actually digest it. And this enzyme is called lactase. So the lactase enzyme plays a role in the body in ripping apart the lactose sugar molecule in milk. Now, nearly everyone can drink milk as a baby, and that's because we have high levels of that enzyme, lactase, in our gut when we're babies. However, after we begin to age, our body is biologically programmed 
to stop making that lactase enzyme. And so there's this particular thing called a transcription factor, which actually binds to your DNA. It binds to the part of your DNA that codes for that lactase, and it stops that gene from being turned into proteins. And so you no longer produce lactase. And that makes sense, because after you're a baby, you don't really need to drink milk anymore, right? You, you can eat solid food, you're weaned. So when you're a baby, you have high levels of lactase in your small intestine. And that lactase cleaves those sugars and then you absorb those sugars into the wall of your small intestine. And those nutrients get carried all throughout your bloodstream to the rest of your body and provide energy for you. However, once you stop producing lactase, that lactose just builds up in your small intestine. And the concentration of lactose in your small intestine actually causes water to seep in from the surrounding tissue. And then the undigested lactose just continues down through your small intestine into your large intestine. And in your large intestine, it gets eaten by bacteria. And the bacteria basically eat it and burp up all these different gases like hydrogen, methane, and carbon dioxide. And all that watery and gassy mess comes out your other end as diarrhea. So once you stop producing lactase, you can't digest lactose and you get diarrhea when you drink milk. So what about the people who can still drink milk even when they're adults? I can drink milk and I don't have diarrhea after I do so. Well, it turns out that we are actually mutants. Upstream from that lactase gene, you'll find that there is this regulatory region of the genome. And in people who can still drink milk after they're weaned, it turns out that they have mutations there. And these mutations allow this regulatory region of the genome to fold around and bind to this thing called OCT1 and to the lactase gene. And this basically allows um, the cellular machinery that makes proteins from your DNA to better bind to that gene and thus it produces more lactase. So in essence, our cells have hacked the system. They found a way to keep making lactase even after they were supposed to stop. These mutations have occurred so that we can keep drinking milk even when we're adults and we're not supposed to be drinking milk anymore. So the ability to keep drinking milk even after you're grown is something that's called lactase persistence. Um, that lactase, that enzyme, persists around in your system. And when you look at the geographic like distribution of the ability to keep digesting that lactase, there's actually some interesting trends. The highest prevalence of lactase persistence is in Northern Europe. And that explains why a lot of white people, myself included, tend to view, you know, lactase persistence as the typical kind of normal sort of thing. Yeah, we can all digest milk. But it's not very common in certain other parts of the world. The few other places where it are, is common are Saudi Arabia and Western Africa. But when you go to places like uh, Asia or Southern Africa, very, very few people can actually digest that lactose. In fact, like in China, it's estimated that only 15% of people are actually lactase persistent. At this point, you might be wondering how exactly does lactase persistence and the gaining of this ability to digest milk, how does that all fit within a creationist perspective? Well, it would appear that God originally created humans unable to digest lactose into adulthood. So it would seem that the original people, Adam and Eve, weren't actually able to keep drinking milk and that these, this ability to digest lactose is something that originated post-flood in multiple different people groups. So what probably happened is that at or a little after the time of Babel, as the people were dispersing out, these various mutations happened in multiple different populations. And so each of these different people groups, as they were expanding outwards and finding new territories, got this ability to drink milk. 
and we're able to very quickly take advantage of that. Milk and curds are referenced in the book of Job. Uh, another story where milk is referenced very early on is when Abraham invites those three mysterious people to a dinner, and guess what he serves them? He also serves them milk as well. But ancient peoples weren't just milking cows, they also were milking goats and camels. And in the story of Jacob and Esau, we hear about how Jacob gives to his brother Esau milking camels. How's it going over here? Um, well, it's so Oh my, milk. you only got that much milk? <laughs> <laughs> it's not going wonderful. Okay. Yeah, I got a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> I think I need some more practice. Definitely. Now it's time to let Daisy loose. Good girl. Well, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, that was. <laughs> Thanks so much for having me over. It was great. And now it's time to enjoy the fruits of our labor. Time for me to digest some lactose.